Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome for the first time to my new subscribers. I seem to have gotten quite a few lately. It's really exciting. I have passed 500, which I can't believe, and I had wanted to have a giveaway when I hit 500 and life just sideswiped me. Um, some of you know that I am a cancer survivor. I was diagnosed with colon cancer when I was 38 years old and have been in remission for 14 years, cancer-free from colon cancer 14 years. And then about a year ago, I started getting really serious about improving my health. And right around the same time, I started having some concerns, some health concerns, one of which was a large lump in my neck. And this was a lymph node that had given me problems in the past, and so I wasn't overly worried, but there were some other things going on too. So, you know, I just wanted to keep an eye on it. My doctor wasn't concerned at all. So in the beginning, every couple of months, he would have me come in and he'd, you know, feel it and check it or whatever. But I was noticing more and they were starting to hurt. And that's one thing I'd like to bring away. The reason I'm doing this video is because when I got diagnosed this time, I went right to YouTube and just wanted to, this is a rare cancer, my new diagnosis, I wanted to know about it. I was looking for videos, they were hard to find. Some that I found uh, you know, about this or related things was really scary. So I really just want, first of all, to bring some awareness, um, to clear up some misconceptions that I encountered, offer hope, encouragement, maybe community, because I got a lot and out of the videos that people put up and shared, and um you know some of the myths like i mean the ones that i heard i remember it turns out that i probably had had that colon cancer for 10 years eight to ten years i was told before it was found and there were signs and symptoms but ones that i had been told oh no that's not anything like if there's bleeding when you use the restroom I was told, no, if it's bright blood, it's nothing. It would have to be dark, and that was not true. And there were other things. I don't want to get too graphic here. Um, and then as for the lump, you know, I'd always heard, oh, if it hurts, it's not cancer. If it moves around a little bit when you push on it, it's not cancer. Not true, either of those things. Um, I had heard horror stories about bone marrow biopsies, and, and they have come a long way. So I'm not saying those were lies, but I just want people to know there are better uh, practices in place now and that you can especially make sure you ask for if they don't automatically offer it. So I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that in another video that my bone marrow biopsy, it was, it was fine. It was nothing, you know, terrible. But anyway, so back to March, we were just feeling around for it. I eventually was able to get some an ultrasound ordered and there turned out to be quite a few lumps in there that I couldn't feel. So there were more than I knew. Um, so we watched some more, did another ultrasound a few months later. I was getting more concerned. I was losing hair, which, you know, some people are, it may or may not be related to the cancer. Um, my fatigue was getting worse. I have fibromyalgia slash chronic fatigue. So I wasn't really thinking anything of that, but it was getting worse. So, you know, fatigue is a, it's a called the B symptom, an active symptom of this um, particular cancer. So uh, after the CT scan, well, I even had a push for that. They just wanted to keep doing ultrasounds. Finally got the CT scan because I wasn't gonna be able to get my biopsy that I've been asking for for six or more months without first getting a CAT scan. So I got that ordered and then they were like, you know, still wanting to just watch. And I was by January, January, February, I was just like, I'm, I'm just done. First of all, it's a lot of tests. Second of all, it's a lot of money because insurance isn't what it used to be. And I just, I just want to know, I want to put myself at ease. My family, I have adult children who are very concerned. My husband, of course. And so I finally was able to get an ultrasound guided biopsy on my lymph node and it came back. Um, so technically the diagnosis is a blood cancer. Um, it's a subcategory of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and it's small CD5 positive B cell lymphoma. So what I have technically is called CLL slash SLL. I have chronic lymphocytic leukemia and small lymphocytic lymphoma. 
So chronic meaning slow growing or indolent. So that's good. That's the not aggressive right now. Um, the fact that I've got both means it's in my bone marrow, my bloodstream, and my lymphatic system. I had seen two hematologist oncologists. Um, the first one, they said he was a specialist, but I, I didn't really feel like, I feel like they were pushing that a little bit. It, he was still more of a general oncologist, but he was actually my second opinion. I just got in with him first. And so he had staged me a little bit different and, and staging for this is different anyway. Um, so after seeing him, I saw a true specialist who I'm with now and he's great. And he staged the SLL at stage four and the CLL, he had said zero. I think the other guy said one. So somewhere in a zero and one. And all that really means is it's the cancer is showing up more in my lymphatic system than um, my bone marrow or blood work right now. Um, this type of cancer, you don't, so it's incurable. It's an incurable cancer, but it's not necessarily immediately terminal. So some people get treatment right away. Some go on what is called watch and wait. Some patients call that watch and worry. Some patients call it active surveillance because it makes them feel like they're actually, you know, doing something. Cause we are, we're researching, we're learning and working with our doctors, you know, and our team to, to be as healthy as possible because it is possible to live for years. Um, for some people, they go years without treatment. Some people, you know, live with treatment for many years. My oncologist explained that it is possible to have a normal lifespan. Actually, in the past six years, there have been more advances made in this field, this particular cancer, than there were in the past 20 years combined. So, um, there are various different treatments. A lot of times you'll go on one. When it stops working, they switch you to another because cancer is a very smart disease. Uh, a, a lot of people like to say that um, one of the things that people say or you don't necessarily die of the cancer itself, it's the secondary issues that this cancer brings with it because it's an immune system issue and so it's the secondary things like if you get an infection your body can't fight it as well if you get pneumonia that kind of thing it it's worsened because of your condition with this cancer and so but technically that's what you would succumb to not the cancer um, secondary cancers are a much greater risk when you have this cancer uh, the, from what I've been able to read in the literature the greatest um, risk is the melanoma skin cancer and and that you know you know how it is when you research in doctors and all that there's differences so some places i read you know you have a four times greater risk other people say oh you have a 500 percent higher risk of you know getting skin cancer and so essentially what it means is be careful you know so now i take extra steps when i'm in the sun um uh, another thing that can happen, which is considered rare, but this is also considered a rare cancer. This I, okay, look, my brain can't do this math. I was told this is a very rare cancer, a rare cancer, but it's the most, the CLL part is the most common type of leukemia in adults. So I don't know how you can be rare and most common. And honestly, I don't have the energy to try and figure that out. But, and to median age for this diagnosis is 65 years old and males more than females. So, you know, I was diagnosed at 52. So, um, so I'm saying this to say that rare doesn't offer me much comfort because I'm always in that 2%. And so there's a possible complication um, that comes with this and it's called Richter's transformation or Richter syndrome. And what that means is that my small B cell lymphoma can just decide to mutate to a large B cell lymphoma, which is aggressive and usually terminal and pretty quickly. So, um, you know, but the doctors are aware of that. I go, I have uh, my second appointment with my oncologist in a couple of weeks and I see them every three months. Hold on, my husband's coming. 
Okay, we're also about to have a thunderstorm, so the lighting might change. I do not have a professional setup, and given the fact that I've been told I am now going to have cancer for the rest of my life, I don't think that's going to happen, uh, a professional lighting and camera situation, so, uh, and that's fine. Um, so anyway, I honestly don't even know where, I, oh, so, so, um, I think I was talking about how it can transform into that scary cancer. So the doctors are aware of that, obviously, and I go every three months and, you know, I'm still waiting to get a little more information from my oncologist about that. But the research I've done, you know, says that there's, you know, indicators, you know, because you do not just regular blood work, you have uh, genetic testing done and, you know, flow cytometries and all this other stuff. So. Hopefully not another bone marrow biopsy for a while because while it wasn't bad, I have, some of you know also, I had had some back issues. I was better bed ridden for 18 months. I had surgery and so there's lingering nerve damage. And so actually it wasn't until a week or two after when certain pain didn't go away that I realized, you know, it aggravated something. But I don't think that's a typical complication. So I wouldn't worry about it if you're being told that you need a bone marrow biopsy. Mine was um, CAT scan guided. And so what that meant was they put me on, well, I'm gonna do a whole other video on that, but let me just say, praise Jesus, I was sedated. And if that wasn't something they offered, I don't know that I would have done it. So, so I'll talk more about that later. The fatigue is real, it's not a joke. It's not like anything I've ever experienced. So it's harder to do the videos. Oh, there is something else I, I, I wanted to say. Um, we also have a family member at right around when I was diagnosed and his cancer, he had cancer uh, a couple of years ago and was doing well and then started, he started noticing lumps and it took him a long time to figure out what it was. They thought that that type of cancer, it was lung cancer, they thought it came back and it didn't. He's got a whole new cancer, it's esophageal and it's, it's bad. So, um, if you pray, and if you're praying for me, I would ask that you pray for him too. I don't want to share his name because you don't know, have permission to put it out there on social media. Um, it doesn't matter. God knows his name. And um, so, yeah, he started chemo. I am, I don't know if I said that I am watch and wait, that I am not on treatment yet. I had planned on doing notes and stuff, but then I realized this is a personal topic, and so I just figured I wanted it to be off the cuff. But if you are praying for me, I did jot down um, these Bible verses because there are quite a few. What I'm praying for myself during this time is, you know, oh my gosh, so much has happened to our family in the last five years and five plus years. Um, yeah. And so... Uh, so what I'm praying for myself right now is that the Lord would help me to see suffering as a privilege. Um, the Bible tells us in Philippians 1.29 that we are granted suffering for Christ's sake. Um, granted. You know, it's, it's a gift. It doesn't always feel like it. But it's a privilege. And... I know it in my head and I sometimes feel it in my heart, but sometimes I have to remind myself, you know, I've got four grandchildren under the age of three. We waited a long time for them. Some of you know, um, after years of trying, one of my children finally uh, got pregnant and then lost those twin girls. They were still born. And so, and it's just been five years of constant you know, battle, battles. And so I finally have my, you know, in addition to that, it's just been a lot of cancer and death and trauma. And um, so I want to be here for my grandbabies, you know? And so um, sometimes that'll kind of get at me there. So yeah, so Philippians 1.29 says we suffer for Christ's sake. 1 Peter 4.12 says we shouldn't be surprised by the fiery trials that come to test us, but to rejoice in sharing the suffering of Christ. So we're granted this privilege and we're to rejoice in it. Um, 
in the Bible also says that in, in second Corinthians, that Paul's suffering was so severe, he despaired of life. So God understands when, you know, when we have that minute of, you know, okay, I know it's a privilege, but this really sucks. <laughs> God understands. Um, so what I want to be able to do is to remain faithful, remain faithful through all of this. And I want to carry Christ's name well. Um, so I, when I'm having a hard time, I just make myself say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege. Thank you, Lord, for the trials that are in my life right now. And what I ask is that he use the trials and suffering in my life to conform me more into the image of Christ, to bring me to the end of myself that, so that I would lean on him, to grow me in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that he would use this suffering in my life to sanctify me, as you can see, I'm still trying to memorize it. it it's a lot. Um, I also ask, that, ask him to remind me to redeem my time. That Ephesians 5, 16 says, Life is short, my days are numbered, and I ask him to help me to make the most of the time that he's given me. Um, so I think that about sums it up. If you want to pray for me, please agree with me in this prayer. And... Um, yeah, so that's my update. Cancer again, and um, I am fully trusting in the Lord. He has shown up in so many ways, uh, remarkable, and it reminds me of my favorite one of, well, I have so many, but one of my favorite verses, it's the last one in Matthew, it's like 2820 B, and it's where Jesus says, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age, and oh, I have loved that since since I first got saved and it's been 23 years now and I just love it. He's shown up. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the ways he's shown up and has blessed me so much over the last five years is through a pastor, um, that I met through YouTube because he has a prison ministry and that was close to my heart. I, um, was involved in prison ministry years ago and he knows who he is. I don't want to call anybody out, but he has become a dear friend. He has blessed me in so many ways. He has asked for prayer for me on his channel without even telling me, which chokes me up every time. Um, my husband got in a car accident yesterday coming home from boating. And uh, I happen to have been commenting on one of this, pa this pastor, one of his recent videos when my husband called and so when I got back to finish my comment I told him you know but and like I said to him praise Jesus my husband is okay obviously the car is not but it's just a car and it, my husband's okay so I'm okay you know and then like in the middle I don't know I sleeping is an issue and it was the wee hours of the morning and I saw he put up a prayer request video so you know he's got a ministry there's stuff going on I was like I'm awake let me pray for him prayer request was for me and my husband yeah so God's done stuff like that I've got people all over the country I've got people in other countries that are praying for me and I'm praying for them and we're you know some of them it's cancer some of them it's other things but uh, let's just focus on the good guys Huh? And I don't mean the good guys like people. I mean, let's focus on the good. Um, there's so much. It's, it's choose joy. It's the perspective that you have. You know, one thing that in the beginning of this whole diagnosis thing, I was like, this is so messed up. You know, people are saying, oh, you've got a good kind of cancer. First of all, please don't say that. There is no good kind of cancer. Um, it's good f until it isn't, you know, this one and by good meaning no treatment right now. Um, but so I was sitting there and I'm thinking, this is crazy. I am sitting here and I don't know if I'm gonna have 20 years or five months. And right away, our God is so faithful. And I, I believe it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Then he said um, that that's no different than yesterday. That's no different from the moment before you found out which oh my gosh, this video is already way too long or I would tell you how I 
found out because it was traumatic. Um, it was traumatic how I found out. But anyway, what I was saying was my situation is no different than it was the day before I found out that I had cancer because nobody knows. Nobody, the Bible tells us nobody's promised tomorrow. None of us knows how long we have. None of us knows when the Lord is going to call you home. Um, none of us knows how long we have. So really nothing changed. And I can't even tell you the peace um, that that gave me. I just happened to be more aware. Um, my, in, my mortality is more in my face. And I'm choosing to see that as a gift because I'm being much more intentional with my time, especially since my energy is limited and you know, all, all my resources are limited now. And so I'm even more intentional. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Um, if you're interested in more information, if you want me to continue this story, please let me know in the comments. Please just like um, this video if you found value in it. And um, if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe. And thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate those of you who've reached out to make sure I'm okay. And I'm so thankful for all of you. So have a great day.